Does Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt have the authority to tell schools that they can't protect the health of their students? No. I'm Alad Gross, and this is the Missouri Comment. This past week, Attorney General Eric Schmidt decided to start sending cease and desist letters to schools that require students to wear masks as part of their COVID-19 mitigation efforts. He also opened up a new government email account asking anyone to take photos and videos of children, teachers, or I guess anyone else who happened to be there. Send those photos and videos to Schmidt's government office and hope that this newly created big government registry will somehow help families fighting big government. But not any videos or photos will do. Attorney General Schmidt, who is now trying to leave his term early and become Senator Schmidt, asked for the videos to be shot in the right lighting and in the horizontal orientation. Evidence sure does look a whole lot better when it's shot like a campaign ad. But do these letters have any teeth? Attorney General Schmidt cites a recent decision in Cole County in the case of Robinson versus the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. In that case, Schmidt actually represented the state against a plaintiff challenging the authority of unelected public health officials to impose health orders. Schmidt lost that case. And despite the fact that the department reportedly wanted to appeal, their lawyer, Attorney General Schmidt, refused to do so. And for some reason, the department has said it won't hire a private attorney to appeal either. The ruling did more than just say unelected health officials cannot issue health orders. It actually got rid of an entire portion of a state regulation that empowers local health departments to come up with measures to quarantine, disinfect, immunize, close businesses, notify people who may have been exposed to diseases, and even notify the public about the potential spread. And it's not just for COVID-19. It's for a whole host of communicable diseases that were listed there, like anthrax, botulism, the plague, rabies, ricin, SARS, smallpox, and Ebola. And it even includes diseases related to an act of terrorism. It also includes more common diseases like the flu. Well, Attorney General Schmidt apparently didn't read that far into the ruling. When asked about a local health department throwing in the towel, his office said, well, good for them. But we don't know why they're stopping anything other than quarantines and mask orders. Well, maybe, just maybe, it's because the court told them to. That's not the most thorough legal analysis from our chief law enforcement officer, but I'm sure he makes up for it with some hidden talent that we'll all learn about together one day here in Missouri. The opinion in Cole County highlighted plenty of problems with a legislature delegating authority to unelected officials so that politicians can escape the political consequences of those decisions. And a responsible legislature would get to work on fixing that right now. Most Missourians probably aren't looking forward to not being warned about an outbreak of cholera or the Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus. Good luck with that one. You may have noticed that so far, I haven't said anything about schools and their authority, and neither did the court. The only time schools were mentioned in the opinion was with respect to what unelected health officials could or could not do. In fact, one of the judge's rulings kept in place a regulation that allows public health officials to exclude students from school due to COVID-19. So they still do retain some powers. However, there was nothing about the powers of elected school boards or elected county commissioners or even the elected governor. It said nothing about what schools can or cannot do. Missouri has a long history of schools taking measures to protect the health of their students. The law today says a whole bunch of things including that school boards have general control of the property and affairs of their school districts, and they are vested with the government and control of those districts. It even allows schools to prevent students who have a contagious disease 
or who have been exposed to one from coming to school. And this isn't the first time in Missouri that we've had to deal with some kind of an epidemic. In the early 1900s, Missouri's Supreme Court dealt with challenges to smallpox mitigation efforts by schools. The court looked at two provisions of our law. First, a statute to this day still says that elected school boards have wide authority to make rules and regulations for the organization, grading, and government of their school districts. Second, Missouri's Constitution provides for free public schools for Missouri children. Now, taken together, Missouri's Supreme Court has held for over a century that schools can issue health-related requirements for students. In two decisions, in 1909 and shortly thereafter in 1911, the court upheld the wide authority of school boards to issue health-related regulations. Now, until our current Attorney General, that wasn't a controversial opinion. In fact, in 1935, Attorney General Roy McKittrick issued an official Attorney General opinion recognizing that school boards have this authority in this specific area. And in 1962, so did Attorney General Tom Eagleton. And Tom Eagleton actually became a senator, so there's still hope if you'd want to do the right thing. The law is clear that school boards have the power to protect the health of students, even when some adults or one attorney general running for higher office disagree. The case in Cole County that Attorney General Schmidt keeps pointing to does nothing to change that. What's worse, Eric Schmidt actually has a lawsuit against a school district already about mask mandates. He sued the Columbia Public Schools back in August. And at the time, the judge rejected Schmidt's argument that schools' mask requirements should be immediately set aside because that's not what the law says. The attorney general could just try to win that case, put forward his evidence. Instead, he's pretending that a case he lost that has nothing to do with school boards and their power gave him a victory that he still hasn't had. And although he's selling the public a fiction, he has not filed anything in the Columbia case asking the judge to immediately rule in his favor. And that's because honest lawyers know he hasn't won anything yet. The attorney general is lying to the public, and he's using you and your taxpayer money to prop up his losing campaign for United States Senate. And along the way, he doesn't mind violating ethical rules that every lawyer in our state must follow. Attorney General Eric Schmidt, your lawyer is lying to you. He's lying to parents and kids. He lies to keep innocent people behind bars for decades. He lies to hide public records from the public. He lies so that his big donors get special treatment from our government. He lies to the people about what he believes while using his power to do what he wants. And as you can imagine, those lies coming from someone who should be a trusted source of information in Missouri is leading to consequences well beyond a political race like when an armed police officer got onto a school bus to yell at the driver for having kids wear masks while on board, a regulation that that driver had little to do with implementing. Look, most people don't like masks. Most people don't like shots. I hate them. Most people don't like catching novel coronaviruses or exposing their kids to one when we know it can kill vulnerable folks and it may cause long-term damage that today we don't even understand yet. We can disagree about whether policies like masking or vaccinations or spacing are the right ways to go. And when public officials want to disagree, they have legal avenues to do it, like school board elections or going to court with actual evidence and not lying to the public about what a judge said. That's what upholding the rule of law looks like. But if you're an adult who can get the shot and you're refusing to do so, Essentially forcing schools to put in these mask requirements and daily temperature checks just to keep some semblance of education going. All while you're complaining that kids shouldn't wear masks, boy, do I have an incompetent, power-hungry attorney general for you. I just don't recommend that you listen to him if you're looking for real legal advice. I'm Alad Gross, and this has been the Missouri Comment.